Ronaldo. Beautiful as ever. <laughs> so happy to have you on the show. Okay, first of all, I'm a very honest individual. Mm -hmm. um, it took me forever to get you on the show. Really? Your gatekeepers are top notch. They're doing their jobs right. They're doing their jobs <laughs> right. They're doing their jobs right. So, people know you from music or from coffee? Oh, I always ask that question okay. now. It used to just be like coffee. And now okay. I have to like ask, I'm like, did you find the coffee first or the music? Okay. It seems to be a nice like halfway point, okay. but it's still mainly coffee. Okay, still mainly coffee. It's like so, this thing, like you do that, right? I'm like, so yeah, are you the, the original coffee bay? I am the original coffee bay. Okay, so yes. explain to people who do not know what coffee bay is. So coffee bay is, well, I'm a barista. Okay. Um, so it's a day job. But Coffee Bay is just this thing I do on Instagram and TikTok. Okay. I will pour milk or creamer, some say too much, into <laughs> coffee and it reveals a secret message. So okay, you so never know what the message is going to be, but sometimes it gets you. So you say uh, the person who sent you this wants yes. you to know. Yes. You pour, what are you pouring? Cream into the it's coffee? It's creamer, yeah. Okay, and that's the first minute, and then you but, turn it around. Yes. And then you have something either cute or a little, a little raunchy. A little risque. A little risque. Mm. Okay, so. How does it feel to get like 27 million views off of you just doing your day job? It was wild. So okay. I initially did it. I sent it to a boy that I was seeing. It was a little flirty one. Um, and then he was like, you need to put this like up so everyone could see it. Okay. And I was at my job when this happened. Yeah. So he just kept texting me throughout the day like, it's at 1 million, it's at 2 million. I think, I don't even know what the first one is now. It's 20 okay. something million. 27. But 27? 27 million. I did my research. I was scrolling all the way to the very bottom, mm -hmm. right? And when I got there, I was like, okay, the first one was interesting. And you kind of developed yeah. more as you've gone, like, more yeah. sophisticated, like, you with intention. Mm. And it's just kind of, like, took a life of its own. Yeah, it did. Sometimes, like, people will comment stuff, and I'm like, that's good. And I'll okay. do that. Or I've, Have you ever I've had stole a, lot of a comment from somebody? Like, you know what? I'm I actually, that. see, my thing is I like to give credit when I see someone do that because I feel like the people that stole my thing, didn't give me credit, and I feel like, I don't know, I don't want to be like the monster that stole from me. <laughs> I mean, well, that was my next question, yeah. because it's been about a year, right, since mm. you've done it? Yeah, it's And been I've a year. seen so many caricatures of yourself yeah. steal your idea. Yeah. How does that feel when you see someone else doing was, what you kind of started? At this point, I've come to accept that it's a trend and people are gonna do trends, okay. but yeah. three weeks after I did start, this guy, we won't name him, he doesn't need the exposure. <laughs> okay, but, uh, all right. If you know, you know, and most okay, people right. know. He just started doing it like word for word, like everything, and I reached out to him at the start, and I was like, hey, like, could you at least give me credit? Like, there's okay. a bunch of other people asking him to give me credit as well. And it is what it is now, mine leads back to my music, but it was definitely like making me feel some type of way when people would start commenting on my videos, like, okay. you stole this, and I'm like, he literally stole it Okay, so they come to me. you and they say, you yeah, stole it Yeah, people that see else. him first will be like, oh, this girl is like copying you, but most people that have been there from the start know okay. that I started that. Okay, well, that's so, good. Well, without giving his name, we don't want to mm. give him any credit. Is he getting more views than you are at this point? Is it kind of neck and neck? What would you say? I actually blocked him. So oh, so you don't even know what's going on. His face was you. triggering to me. Good for you. Good, <laughs> for you. Like, good for you. I also just, you know, he's in his lane. I'm in mine. Okay. I feel like my stuff leads back to my music, which I'm very thankful for. Okay. I have something to show for good. views, I That's guess. Good. Whereas I think he's just a husband. And oh, okay, I don't okay. think, you know, he's doing it. He's getting his own views, but... That's good. I like to just think that mine's helping my music. It makes me feel better. <laughs> makes you feel better. Yeah. Now, now your accent, where, where are you from? So I'm from Australia. Okay. I grew up like all over the world. I lived in America for a bit. My dad's African-American. Okay. Um, that black don't crack. We talked about that earlier. Crack. Okay, all right, okay. Not yet, at least. Not yet, Let's okay. keep praying. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I grew up all around the world. Um, I did a lot of high school in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Lived in America for a little bit when I was younger, but... I think a lot of people think Australians sound like Steve Owen and like there's one accent. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, but I'm like, there's actually a lot of different cultures in Australia. Okay. We all have different accents from different places. Some of us came from convicts, some of us didn't. Okay, so, all right. Little history lesson. So as far as like, I did some research on like Australian mm. contemporary R&B artists. Yeah. There are not a lot of them. There really are. Is this like a space you feel that you can kind of, 
you know, take over? Is this like a lane that you feel like since, because I, I literally yeah. looked on uh, Wikipedia and mm. it gave me like 26 artists. Yeah, and how many of them were black? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> so that, that's very true. So mm. I was thinking, okay, she's an Australian R&B artist. This is right. very interesting. Yeah. Have you thought about that? Like how you can kind of take over that position? Um, I wasn't really thinking about how I could like take over that position. I definitely realized and I don't think I realized this as much when I was growing up, that there wasn't a lot of representation, mm -hmm. especially for brown artists in Australia, especially for women as well. Okay. And until I moved to America when I was younger and I saw, you know, you have Beyonce, you had Rihanna, and sure. I took that back to Australia with me, but I still wasn't seeing anyone mm -hmm. from where I was from that was doing that. Um, but in hindsight, I think I've kind of become the representation that I was looking for. Okay. Um, so I hope that translates and I hope other people, other Australians, Brown Australians can sure. see me and be like, oh, maybe like I could do that too. Because sure. it took me like kind of just realizing what I needed, I guess, when I was growing up. So there has guess, to be a first, right? Yeah. There has to be somebody that kind of breaks the mold into that. Yeah. And yeah. it's a very tough industry being from mm. where you're from. Do you, did you leave a home, Australia, to come here to pursue music? No, I uh, fled Australia because of racism. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So well, what, what type of racism did you did you encounter? See, it's interesting in Australia because it's so like inadvertently kind of racist. I would say it's more ignorance. Um, until 1973, we had the white Australia policy, so there okay. weren't really people of color in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like it's a little behind in that regard, but I think we, we didn't have a civil rights movement. Okay. The government won't even give indigenous people rights to okay. have a say in their government. So it's just like, it's very behind. It's a very white country. Still, right now. Still, it's definitely changing. And I feel like there's a lot of, like the youth are growing up and they want to be represented. They want to be seen. They want to be heard. Right. So I think if I go back now, it's definitely a little different. We have a lot more like black artists and stuff over mm -hmm. there. Like Genesis Owusu. Sure, Kike sure. Maita. Um, so yeah, it's definitely changing. I hope for the better, but it's still behind and it's slow progress. But. So I, I feel like for people who watch your videos, for the cute, uh, the funny, you yeah. know, very desirable, and really then funny. you'll just throw in there <laughs> something just off key, off the and then people are just kind of like, and when I speak on that, I'm talking about like, you know, the Palestine, Israel, right? Yeah. You're like very passionate. I was like, okay, this is, she's like a little bit of a rebel. And I was wondering where did that come from? Cause babyface assassin, but I see how like you take the daggers. You, you don't yeah. mind giving your input. Where's I that mean, from? so when I was living in Australia, obviously I was used to all the racism. It actually took me coming to America and kind of understanding, like seeing black women more to understand like the things that a lot of people were saying to me are not okay. okay. But I was so unaware that like someone's not supposed to be saying that to you. Mm -hmm. um, so from there, I just kind of started educating myself. You know, I, I grew up in a time where YouTube was just kind of like starting um, and there was a lot of people that I could just like watch from my computer that looked like me. Sure. It made me kind of understand the world and who I was as a black woman a bit more. There you go. Because before I just felt other like in Australia, like mm -hmm. I wasn't white, but then I was whatever they wanted me to be. Well, what do, they, what do they label you as? Just other. Just like, other. Yeah, well, I'm black. I'm seen as black, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I knew like, I obviously have light skin privilege. There's like, like people who are darker than me that have it a lot worse. You recognize that? I recognize that, yeah, wow. definitely. I feel like I, I understand my privilege in the world. I feel like it's all relative, but I feel like I also have a responsibility to kind of use that if right. they see me as more palatable or whatever. I'm like, I'm not as palatable as you think I am. <laughs> so yeah, in like 2016, for example, we had you know, the death of Philando Castile. Mm -hmm. We had Omar uh, Aubrey as well. And that's kind of when I really got into the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay. And I know I didn't live in America at that point, but I was, obviously, I still am <laughs> African American. You said, I used to be. <laughs> yeah, I used to be. <laughs> right. um, and I just, you know, seeing these things on your screen, you have to eventually be like, enough is enough. Like, this isn't okay. I saw the parallels between police brutality in America mm -hmm. and police brutali brutality in Australia. Yeah. And while they don't necessarily carry guns, they're still arresting people of color, indigenous people, especially in Australia, um, at alarming rates compared to everyone else and okay. the way they're treated in custody and stuff. Right. So I really, it was actually an accident how I got into like protesting and activism. I started with a couple of other girls, this little Facebook group, and we were just gonna have a little rally like to support <laughs> yeah. like you know solidarity and then sure. i think it was about ten thousand. was people. it in the states it was in melbourne australia okay yeah. all right 
and about 10,000 people showed up. I had 10, like the police captain reaching out to me who was like, you need to like, you didn't get a permit for this. And I'm like, I have nothing to do with this. I don't know. I just kind of ignored it. That's the rebel part. Yeah. yeah okay. And then All right. Through that, um, I unfortunately became a target of the Australian, I guess you would say KKK. I don't want to say their name. I don't want to like give them that platform. Okay. All right. But, uh, but it, was it was very serious. It was very like, serious. It was very, very serious. nasty. Very serious threats. The way that they were saying like, they would go after my family. My information was posted online. I was doxxed, I guess you say here. Okay. Um, and that's kind of just what actually led to me coming to America. I kind of fled Australia because I was so scared. My mom was scared. She's like, you just need to get out of here. Like, go She's to where there's there. more people that look like you. She's in Australia. She's, She's in Australia. white. She's fine. She's white. She's <laughs> yeah. fine. She has her protection. Yeah. Okay, but I think right. also through her seeing like what I was going through, like my brothers and sister as well she kind of understood more like her complicity in okay. everything and like how much she also didn't know. So okay. yeah, that's kind of how I got into like activism and stuff. And through that, I met so many people from different cultures, different mm -hmm. backgrounds who were all experiencing very similar things. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're growing up, you kind of only see like the space around yourself. So especially moving to America, it was just, just complete having, change. Complete change. Okay. I got on the plane from Australia to Qatar, which was my layover for oh. white people. Okay. And I feel like I was just like, you know, when you walk into a store and you kind of looked at sideways. Sure. That's how I felt on the plane ride to Qatar. And then from Qatar to Chicago, which is where I initially went. I was like, oh, these people like look like me. Like no one's looking <laughs> yeah. at me funny. Like, so it was just, I felt more welcomed right. in a country that wasn't even really my own. So, so do you believe lot. like... Obviously, we're going to talk about the music, too. Do you, do you think you have, like, a political, you know, career later on? Oh, definitely. Because it seems like, you know, you're, I wouldn't say so far as, like, jeopardizing, mm. but you're, you're not afraid to put how you feel on the line yeah. and risk, you know, your creative abilities right. and music. Yeah. Because I've seen comments saying, you're an amazing singer. You're cute. You're doing what mm. you do. Why do you have to talk about so many things? Yeah. But now hearing your story, it just makes all the sense in the world. To yeah. Me. I feel like a lot of people, I mean, obviously don't understand the situation I came from, yeah. where I came from, what kind of place that is. Um, and I'm, I have, th I've seen those comments. I've been warm, warned by a lot of people in the like, industry already. Don't respond. Like, Be careful. Like, yeah. people aren't going to work with you, but I'm honestly not interested in working with anyone that doesn't have humanity at the center of their hearts. Wow. And I don't need people, <laughs> I'll say it now, I don't really need people like listening to me if they don't like that I have a sense of humanity and empathy, sure. like yeah. that's on you. Like you can go listen to whoever you want. There's plenty of music in the world, yeah. but I just like, I don't need that. I'm not gonna like beg for that. You know what I mean? Like you either like me and my politics or you don't. Like I'm not gonna force my beliefs on people, but I would hope that a lot of people can find the same like sure. humanity in their chest. It's like that feeling. And you're doing both. Like, and yeah. I think you're doing it very well because mm. people are not like, you know, they're not, blackballing you they're not like right. cutting you off they're, they're still supporting you yeah i think uh your true fan base realizes this is a part of who you are you're yeah. gonna speak for yourself but you still enjoy the music yeah i'm and also you, super lucky that i'm independent as well that's and that, that's a choice that i made and i'm trying to maintain that independence as well like i don't want no masters like so I don't would you ever you. sign to a label I thought about it. I used to think that signing to a label was like the be all end all. Like that's what artists need to have. Like you need to be chosen sure. by a label. And yeah. then I just kind of, as I was doing my own research, when I did want to start getting into music and learn how to record myself, do all this stuff by myself, um, I would find other artists like Nick D and Russ and yes, Ray. Yeah, yeah. Um, Great examples. Yeah, who I would just listen to their interviews. I actually reached out to Ray really early on SoundCloud, like, how do you record your vocals? And she kind of went through it with me. I don't, she probably doesn't remember me at all. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, so I'm just lucky that I don't really have to answer to anyone if I don't want to. That's great. Obviously respect people's beliefs and stuff as okay. well, but I just don't really have any respect for a lack of humanity. So. Okay, so speaking of like the music, the, the, the music video with you, the parrot, was that the parody? Yeah, okay, that was, was this is, uh, something strawberry? Strawberry cake. Yeah. Strawberry cake, okay. Yeah. Now, the video is very interesting for anybody mm. who hasn't seen it. So, Lots as I'm watching the video, you know, you, you're, you're kind of focused on certain individuals. Yeah. And at the very end of the video, with the love note, the guy, he's reaching out like, this is for yeah. me. 
but you're giving it to the girl. Right. Was that like, in, with the, obviously I believe it was intention. Was right. that you just saying, I'm bold, I say what I want to say? Or is this speaking more to, to who you are as a person? I think it's, you know, I'm bi. A lifestyle. Yeah, there I'm you bi. Go. It's part of the LGBT community. It's nothing okay. that I really like have. I don't bring it up in a conversation. Like I hadn't really told my parents before. So is but, this like breaking? Are they going to see this? I mean, they, I'm sure they know now. <laughs> okay. Because I was like, wow. <laughs> Dad, I'm gay. <laughs> no, but okay. uh, yeah, so that was, I worked with a really great um, creative director and okay. director, Kayla Herring on that okay. one. And I kind of told him what I was looking for. He listened to the song and hit me back with a treatment. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, I was giving the note to the guy. And I'm like, I love this, but let's make it gay. Like, I'm not going to be chasing so this man this is you, the creative directing. Like, I'm giving it to the, the girl. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't want to, I didn't really like the look of chasing a guy around the beach who, if you've seen the video, he's already with a girl. It's I'm a like, great video. I'm great not video a homewrecker. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, he was with the girl, but like he wasn't paying her any mind. He was cute though, but. He was like, looking at the other girls walking by right. and the yeah. girl was just sitting there. Was, I just like to show the girl some love sometimes. But what, you, know? you did We that. need more of that in this world. You so. did that. But yeah, so that was a cute little video. It kind of, that was actually my first proper music video that I had like a whole crew for. Before that, I was shooting on iPhones. Yeah, I mean, like, it went pretty big. It's like, it what, 600,000, like something crazy? Yeah. You shot it on the iPhone? We, I shot another video on the iPhone, but okay. Strawberry Cake was my first video with like a full crew with like okay. hair and makeup, kind of okay. just figuring out It looks like it was a lot of fun too. Yeah, it was also a lot of money. <laughs> so <laughs> it was so an arm and a leg for So independently, reason. a lot of money, that's coming from y your research, your bank. So I, yeah, a barista budget. Um, I've been working in like bars and stuff for a long time. Okay. I bought all my own music equipment, like after saving up for a summer, just trying to like keep my head above water financially to also pursue music, which okay. I feel like I've been very lucky with. But um, I actually had a couple of songs in a movie last year. Or it's the okay, what year is it? it? What movie? What it's movie? called Talk to Me. It's Talk like to me. Is it, is it like a Netflix hit. thing, or what is it on? No. So I grew up with these two boys, Danny and Michael Philippou, and we used to make like YouTube videos in okay. our little hometown of Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't really. I obviously haven't been back to an Australia, back to Australia in about uh, six years. But they had messaged me on Instagram just randomly, like, "Hey, we're making a little." indie australian film can we use your music and i was like yeah that's fine like <laughs> go ahead and then yeah. next thing you know they're like winning sundance and a24 had bought the movie so that was definitely a lot of exposure um but yeah from that i have got like sponsorships you know stuff like that wow. it's nothing big like I'm but that's still, still it's still great i mean it's yeah. you your credit you get your credit is for it obviously yeah do you feel like that's something you also want to do like put your music into film and oh, things definitely. like that yeah i mean they did tell me that they promised me that they put my music in every movie they do. I'm not holding that to them, but also a little well, bit. Well, if they if they told you that, let's let's keep it real. She's yeah. an independent artist. Let's make this help her with those coins. Let's right? make that happen. I'm right? So humble. It's That's great. good. You're like, I'm so humble. <laughs> so humble. So where do you work at as a barista? I don't really want to say that. Okay, all right, okay. Fair enough. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's very close to home. So it's very a close sketch. to home, okay. But it's a cute little like coffee shop. The people that work there have been so nice. And they don't um, complain about anything. Oh, uh, we definitely complain about a lot of things. <laughs> well, what's but, the complaining about? Oh, I mean, you know, just if you're having a bad day at work and you're dealing with certain things or, okay. you know, sometimes people that run places don't actually understand how to work at those same places. Okay. So all right. I don't want to say too much. They're probably going to watch this. But okay. All right. I'm very grateful they gave me a job, but <laughs> I was too good at that damn job. <laughs> So, uh, music-wise, mm. um, has anybody ever said you sound like Sade? I get that all the time. Okay, Actually, and you know who Sade is, right? Of course, okay. yeah. That, that's that's, Shout that's out my me. Dad. I, I love Sade. I, I love know. Sade. I love her voice. I love her style. She's so just like laid back. Has her own style. Doesn't do too much, but just enough. So, so, do you think the cadences of the similarities in your voice and Sade's voice are just coincidence, or is this somebody that you grew up listening to and you kind of right. obviously respect? Well, I definitely grew up listening to her. I feel like growing up, I didn't really feel like I could sing. Like my voice just wasn't it. Okay. Um, and that's kind of like as I developed writing and stuff as well. And I would, I used to try and sing other people's songs. 
I auditioned for X Factor so many times. X Factor? <laughs> yeah, never got on TV. I is this uh, taken the hint. Joe Rogan X Factor? <laughs> no, this is like X Factor Australia, like Simon uh, Cowell. Like, who else is on X Factor? Does people Simon, watch that anymore? Well, yeah, it's a big show. It's <laughs> yeah. an absolutely big, huge show. But uh, yeah, I would always try and sing other people's songs, and I would think that I'd have to hit the same notes as them. Mm -hmm. But you know, these girls with like super airy voices, my voice just has never been that. Yeah. So once I started writing for myself, I kind of realized that I could write for the tone of my voice. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I couldn't sing, it's that I couldn't sing like everybody else. So- You just sing your own songs? Yeah. You did it, okay, yeah. that makes sense. You and then over sing. time when people would be like, oh, you sound like Sade, I'm like, oh, like you can sing, you just have to find your mm -hmm. tone and kind of understand your tone as well. So that's always been lovely. That I love great. her, so. She, she's amazing. Yeah. Do you find artists, people that are following you on Instagram, do you find that you have to convince them to listen to your music as you use your music and reels? Right. Does it hit as much as you're doing other people's music or like, because um, obviously you put your music in the reels. Yeah. You want it to pop, right? Right. Yeah. So what do you think? Is that like a, is it working? Is it? I think so. Okay. I feel like a lot of people don't even realize they're listening to me at the start. A lot of people say I don't sing like how I talk, which <laughs> I don't hear. Hey, this is true. Yeah. This is yeah, true. Yeah, you think? I heard you. I heard you talking. Uh, you were doing a photo shoot. I was like, oh, she doesn't sound like she talks. That's I don't. I don't hear it though, because I'm just like, I don't know. I always. You need to talk to your hear. team. They're here. You just talk yeah. to your team and see. What are you guys not telling me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I I think that you have a very unique voice. Mm. Obviously, it's your own style. I can yeah. tell it's you, but when you talk, it's just not the same. Really? It's, it's, it's better or worse? It's nothing wrong with it. It's just actually, it's like a um, you know. A hidden immunity, right. so to speak. It's pretty cool. It's pretty Super cool. Superpower. Absolutely. Superpower. <laughs> yeah. Superpower. Um, I'm so sorry. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking like as far as like your music. You using right. music in reels. Do you think like yes. it's hitting as much as you're using another artist, say like Russ in right. the music? Do you do you well, feel like it's it's working as an Yeah. Ones? I used to use a lot of trending sounds because that's what you're supposed to do. Sure. Um, and then I think it was actually one of my managers that was like you should use your own music in the back of this okay so i did and a lot of people were commenting like wait is this you because you would see my name at the bottom and I'm okay like, yeah i make music too okay. and then i realized how many people don't actually realize i make music because you just see a coffee reel you're not going to be like oh this girl makes music i'm gonna go check <laughs> exactly, it out exactly. but i feel like it's really like translated real well like especially with strawberry cake i was using that on coffee reels and then people started baking cakes to that song it's it's just it's a great exposure. song. It, it, who made the instrumental? Is that something that was leased or is it like that was could, something that was leased? Something YouTube. that was leased. Okay, okay. Yeah, when I first started, I was leasing beats from YouTube because okay. I didn't really know how to do anything. That's um, how you start. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that was by uh, I think it's a guy called who? Mantra. Yeah. Uh, who I really I, loved. And I've heard it before somewhere. Yeah. So it was like. Obviously, the song is unique and yeah. shares, but I've heard the instrumental somewhere before. It's also like a very familiar like key change as well. I've yes. heard a lot of songs now, and I'm like, oh, is this mine? Oh, no, it's not. But, is it? Exactly. But is it as good? It's, it's very good. So good. as far as the creating music, do you mm. use like uh, MIDI instruments, or do you have producers that come? Is it an in-home studio? Yeah. What's so your process? It's definitely evolved over the course of like the six years I've been putting music out. It's been four, it's not that long, but okay. Okay. I used to, yeah, find beats on YouTube. I would type in tight beats just, cause I didn't know what my sound was. Sure. I was just trying to figure it out still. Um, and then that evolved into people reaching out to me like, hey, I have this thing you would sound great on. I've actually, a lot of songs that I've made so far, it's been three and that's a lot, but I it's been this kid called Yef from England who reached out to me on TikTok. And now we just keep going back and forth working together. But I've actually just started um, working on producing my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Just I just want to be like a fully faceted artist, like one stop shop. It's Takara. There you go. But I, I also just love the creativity that I have when I'm creating my own stuff and I'm writing the song as I'm producing it as well. I'm not just trying to fit words into something sure. that was from someone else's head. You know what I mean? Which is still great. But uh, I, don't I, know. I love coffee. Oh, thanks. I love coffee. Yeah. Um, it's a huge cup of coffee mm, that you it's have. A big cup of coffee. It's a cup of coffee. And after uh, being a fan of yours and your reels, I thought that you said, I thought that you were like, you know what, let me try music yeah. because of the reels. And you did right. a song called Coffee. No. But now that I know the backstory, you've been doing music for a long time. Yeah. I actually 
did write copy because the copy reels were going off and I was like, let's capitalize. Okay, okay, but, okay, all right. Uh, it just, the timing of it all like just came out when it came out and I feel like people really like that one, but. It's, it's a great song. Yeah, it For is. anyone who hasn't heard Coffee, it's a great song and you can't miss her. She, the coffee like is like just huge. Top 10 in the it's world. A, top 10 <laughs> in the world, top 10 yeah. in the world. In that, my world. <laughs> there was a great comment on one of your songs, I think it was the strawberry one that mm. he was like, this is, I think grossly underrated or something like that. that they said. Right. <laughs> and I and, and I I have to agree because a song like that, just hearing it, is instantly a top one hundred Billboard song, oh, thank you so much. easily. Yeah. And and it's interesting that it's not. I mean, you, you're you're pretty popular. Yeah. I would just keep pushing that out as much as, oh, as possible because it's such a great yeah. song. I actually had some good advice on that song, which I also think is why it's one of my biggest songs. Okay. Um, just someone that's also in the music industry. He's an artist of a friend of mine. Sure. He listened to the song before it was even out. And he's like, you need to put everything you have into this. At the time, that was like my $5,000 in savings, which is yeah. what went into that. Sure. But it was nice hearing someone else, like having that kind of belief that, that I had. I just needed that. I needed to hear it from someone else. I mean, yeah, the song can easily be uh, in commercials, uh, film. Right. It's so, it's, I'm, I'm being <laughs> honest in so many things. I mean, I've done yeah. stuff in film as well. So mm -hmm. I know when I hear it, it's like, it's such a jingle. It's such yeah. like commercialized, like it's oh, a great thanks. song. Don't stop. Cause you know, there's artists that put out music and years later, right. it's right. become top like billboard. Again. It doesn't matter that it's in the year that it was created. So right. you can always continue to capitalize whenever. Yeah, you know? I also, I just love having that back catalog as well. Like yeah. you can find my new music, but if you go back, like you're gonna find that song. It's, it's gonna song always be there. It's yeah. gonna, and this interview is gonna be there. I think, I think okay. it's important for people who do follow you to know like your history. I yeah. think they're gonna be really surprised mm -hmm. hearing like, the things that you went through before yeah. coming to this country. It's been so nice to be able to talk about it because I feel like you never want to like go into a conversation like, do you want to hear about my trauma? <laughs> yeah. but, but you asked me, so it's fine. Well, and I think in today's climate, people want to hear about people's trauma because yeah. they're dealing with it as well. And it may be an outlet for someone else clearly that's suffering in the same situation. Right. I feel know? like that's why, I mean, I hope that's why my music kind of comes across and connects with people as well because it might be a fun little beat, but mm -hmm. if you listen to the words, sure very existential like I'm trying to say something yeah I've tried to write love songs like just like throw away love songs that's really hard for me I was gonna ask you that so because everything you, yeah everything you came from is it hard to write certain songs that was definitely. one of my questions I've definitely tried I feel like in my earlier music I was trying to write songs that I thought people wanted to hear which sure. is like dance music especially coming from Australia big dance music scene EDM um, but I wasn't really saying anything with my chest, like nothing that really meant anything to me. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if it didn't mean a lot to me, then it probably wasn't going to mean a lot to someone else. Well, I, I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like now, especially as I've developed as an artist and gone through so many new experiences, loved and I've lost. That's I good. just feel like I have more to write about. There's more like depth to me. That's and good. I've also become more comfortable. like. Sharing that Tell trauma. Tell your story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've always found it hard to kind of talk to people on like a deeper than surface level, mm -hmm. but it's be always been very easy for me to put it in a song. So. You think you're going to write something about kind of what you went through back home? Is that I think on so. the radar? I, I have a song called Naked that's okay. kind of about that. It's about how I know I'm treated differently when my hair is chemically treated um, as to, opposed to when I'm wearing braids and stuff like that. It's wow. basically about, will you still love me? That's a bar. Without all this fake shit. Yeah, so. That's a bar for real. Thanks. Wow, that's crazy. Wrote it myself. <laughs> you know, so your family, uh, everyone's still back home and you reach out to them uh, often. Yeah. What's so communication like back home? My mom and my brothers, they're all in Australia. My dad's in Bali right now. Okay. And then my sister actually lives with me in Los Angeles. Okay. She's in film, so it's been nice having good, a that's little good, that's good. buddy attached to the hip, not by her choice, but <laughs> by good, blood. That's good. That's <laughs> she good. doesn't have a choice. Well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. When people watch this interview, they're going to be sh shocked by some shocked. of the things that you say. Um, I'm not even done yet. <laughs> you know, exactly. I mean, you have so much as far. I want. I do want to talk about like relationships because you did mention that. What are those? That, that you were, that you were by right <laughs> and where is relationships with you right now? Like, are you like are you a player? Are you dating multiple? I wish I could be a player. You wish you could it's be a player. So it's not working out I for you. I cannot juggle. If I'm Joseph used to be a player. He can help you out. He really? got some. Joseph. He's, he got some tips. He can help you out. He's being Let shy right know. now. Give me that rough though. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, no, definitely I'm single right now. You know, okay. I, I'm open to dating, but I'm mainly focused on my career. So, so it has to be someone that recognizes your focus on your career. 
I think it would have to be someone first and foremost. You have to blow my mind. I want to be swept off my feet. Okay, okay. And I'm not going to settle for anything anymore. There but you go. I just like someone that appreciates, you know, I might not be around every day because okay. I have to do this thing to like better myself. But I would also, you know, love someone that's trying to better themselves as well. Okay. So I think that's a mutual understanding that we would both have or should both have. But at the same time, I'm not looking. You're I'm not just, looking. If it comes to me, it comes to me. If it comes to you, it comes you're to you. You're going to feel that spark, you know. I mean, your DMs have to be crazy, though. I mean, because you're saying... Like, I don't got, read them. You, so you don't even read the DMs? <laughs> I do. <but> okay. <laughs> I tell people I do. <laughs> okay, so you, you do... You, okay, anybody, mm -hmm. in, anybody on a higher status, celebrity-wise, that has hit you up? <laughs> I don't know what I should say. I mean, you can just I say mean, the truth. It's all yeah, good. I mean, yeah. Okay, but yes. I feel like I really need to get to know someone. Like, you can have a blue check. I got one of them, too. Okay, so it's okay. just like, I'm not really impressed by celebrity and stuff. It's more about who you are as a person, how what? you treat other people, especially if you are a celebrity, okay, how you was treat it your fans. Shocking, the individual that hit you up where you're like, hmm, this is surprising? It was, because I just like, I don't see myself as like anyone important or anyone that someone would reach out to. I you're, feel you're, like it's hard to see myself from the outside. But you know your reels have like 27 million views. Like. Yeah, but what, million. Is, what is like TikTok or Instagram fame, you know? Is, yeah. it, is it real? I don't know. Okay, okay. that's, that's so very... Yeah, it's hard fair. to see how people see me, I guess, because yeah. I just see myself and uh -huh. I know what I'm like on the inside. So, okay. um, yeah, I would say it's shocking though. Okay. I'm, if, I would say 15 year old, what's legal age? 16 year old me. <laughs> so the people that were reaching out to me now, I'd be like, really? So you, you left them on red, you didn't even respond. It was um, just... Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll say like, they're usually like complimenting, complimenting my music and I'm sure. like, oh, thanks. Like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, there's been a couple people. Okay, all right. I mean, maybe, you know, when the cameras I'll turn off, <laughs> when the cameras turn off, I can get the information. You'll never play us music again, trust me. I'll never play us music again? I hope not. Okay. Solidarity, brother. Well, okay, exactly. Hey, I, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. That's interesting. It so, might be hard for you. He's got I, some good music. He's got some good music? Well, moving on, next question. Okay, I'm going to throw some names out there. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I mean, I've really enjoyed having you on the show. Uh, mm. You've given a lot of information. Talked a little bit about the dating. Yeah. Not looking, but they have to sweep you okay. off your feet. Yeah. You know, you talked about back home, everything that you went through, your, mm -hmm. your trials, tribulations, and you are a success story because everything, you, you escaped captivity. Out here. And now you're here killing the game right now. Thanks. What's yeah. next for you? Oof, a lot. I've been kind of doing my own artist development for a while now. Obviously, I'm not with a label. Okay. But I still want to grow. Like, I don't want to be dragged on the internet for not being able to dance <laughs> so before we even get to wait, that wait you can't dance i can if someone teaches me like if you tell me the steps otherwise i'm going to panic the so, anxiety so when you me. say when you say dance you're not talking like a beat is on dance you're talking like ballroom dancing like like hip-hop like funky oh. jazz i mean that's pretty cool <laughs> the, the neck movers were there that's pretty cool you know that's yeah. the rhythm right there, there you unfortunately go. i got my mother's rhythm but okay. i can i can definitely hold a two-step if someone oh, okay as long as you can hold a two-step like no, joseph can do yeah. it all and uh i'm pretty oh, really? sure he'll show you he's later a player and a, a player and I that's how he became who he that's is how, that makes a lot of sense you see the fit you see the fit so yeah that's who it is oh, yeah fresh sneaks. absolutely absolutely <laughs> um uh, yeah go ahead yeah no so upcoming we have some shows coming up next year currently in rehearsal um for dancing and for singing we just did a radio show like over what, the was the ra what was the radio show kxlu 88.9 fm that's they good, made that's me memorize good. That. that's good that's great <laughs> um so we did that that was college radio that was super cute before yeah. that we did another live session um at back in the garage which is like a tiny dust situation but yeah uh, is it any of this coming out like soon or? i hope so okay. i don't have confirmation on dates yet but okay, they'll be up right. on the internet when they're up that's great but yeah though. and then hopefully just doing a bunch of shows next year you know putting out a ton more music that i have ready we got a lot of international features which i'm excited oh, this for this is great um and yeah i just want to continue growing you know this has been such a fun little adventure yeah. figuring stuff out by myself and every time i try something even when i mess up i'm learning something so it's just fun and with my team as well like three best friends anyone could ever have. Let's go. Right, you guys? That's right. That's right. I have one last question before we go. This is a tough one. Okay. So uh, okay. if you had to choose between music and politics and you had to go one direction today, which would, would it be? That's such a hard I question. Know, You're going to do I that know, to I me know, like I know, that? I know. I know. It was, it was tough. It's yeah. so hard because I feel like 
to put the music out that I'm putting out, I kind of have to be a bit political. Okay. And I don't feel like, oh God, I don't want to answer this wrong and get dragged on the internet. But I feel like <laughs> without like having a career or something, my voice isn't as strong. Okay. Like, I don't know, I feel like I would need to grow as an artist to then get into like serious, serious politics because I am planning on changing some things in this world. That's amazing. But uh, but yeah. that's the answer though. Like you, you really need <laughs> one vehicle. It. <laughs> it sounds like you need one vehicle to mm. do the other vehicle. Yeah. So you, it sounds like you are pivoting at some point. At some point, definitely. At some point. There's a lot of things I want to do. Yeah. I want to do like philanthropy. I yeah. wanna, obviously with the situation going on in the world right sure. now, there's a lot of children and you know older people as well that are going to need a lot of help. You know, prosthetics. There's a lot of sad things happening right now that oh, I hope goodness. I know I can't change anything overnight now but sure. in the future I can at least change some of that trauma maybe yeah. I don't know this could, the well, it, it is, there's always somebody that's needed and right. you could be that person coming from Australia yeah. they're living in Chicago um, I mean and now you're in the states here are you here yeah. for a long time I think so I have dual citizenship so I'm just having fun right now okay but we'll see where I end up okay. the way this country is going so. <laughs> But you know, I left Australia to come yeah. here, so that says a lot about Australia. As yeah, well. yeah, absolutely. They're gonna absolutely. cancel me in Australia. <laughs> absolutely. I hope they don't. I hope they don't. But you know, it's been a pleasure to have you, Takara. Thank you so and much ladies for and gentlemen, Takara, the one and only. It's been a pleasure. Nice. Thank you so much. It's great. <laughs>